Hello. Hello. Uh, great. And a special welcome uh, uh, to people from Grass community who volunteered to help me. C can you hear me from mic? Because I can't hear myself. Yeah. Okay. So I'm Ivan. I'm uh, from Slovakia. And what I do is I build a software of other people. And I'm really happy if uh, other people are using those uh, uh, builds. And I ride the bikes mountain bikes mostly and I came here uh, all the way from Tallinn through beautiful Estonian uh, forest that's a bike that's a path so it was really nice and challenging I enjoyed that uh, very much so and uh, this talk is going to be about some new ways of running software on a computer so like who except of grass people ever heard about Nix Oh, Nix OS, Netherlands, <laughs> yeah, great, yeah, only one, <laughs> yeah, great. So um, uh, we have uh, quite a huge number of uh, software in uh, our Fosfog stack. We have like uh, many core libraries. Uh, we have like Python, R, and other kind of libraries, desktop application with plugins, databases with extensions web services with plugins, CLIs, and like the special thing is that we always mix all of them uh, together. We, we really love that. And uh, not other domains, not every other domain is doing that, but we do. And we have some like user expectations, uh, users of our software expectations. So I try to put together the list of expectations which I would have if I would be a user. So the first one is I just want to run the software on my machine, which is fair enough. I want to run a software without breaking another one. That's uh, starting to be a little bit more challenging. And I want to have a freedom to decide when I want to update or where I don't want to update at all. Um, I want to be able to reproduce my installation on other machine, maybe in three years later or even now if it breaks or my colleague's machine. And advanced uh, users might have a need to, they, they really want to own the whole dependency graph, the whole whole stack of their product or their, their project. They want to make sure that they will be able to build uh, the whole stack if, if it's needed, so that there's no missing part which can disappear over the time and you, 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 like, uh, you depend on it in your company. And um, you might want to customize some kind of software uh, from your stack, which is like very often by uh, my experience. For example, you want to add some small page to libtiff library or GDAL improvement or whatever somewhere in your stack. And developer expectations, like, well, uh, as a developer, I just want to clone the source code and start hacking without uh, too much uh, effort. And uh, I want to have a quick um, and reliable feedback loop with uh, other users. So like I do something, I submit PR, I fix a bug. So like I want my users or testers or colleagues to test it right now without like um, any uh, problem. So like how, how the journey of uh, source uh, code uh, goes to the user. So there's a source code developed by developers and then once the uh, product or like once the software is finished, we tag it and there's a package maintainer very often which then like uh, pick up the source, package it, upload it to some repository and then user or machine can pick it up. And there are like, huh? No. There are like a huge amount of technologies and packaging formats we use for for packaging actually like this, like much more. Uh, um, and there are multiple problems with that. Like, like if there's a package maintainer uh, in the middle between the user and developer, like well then delivery of the software depends on package maintainers and we need to wait for them uh, sometimes. There's a huge duplication of uh, package maintainers work. Like if new GDAL is released, like all package maintainers from Debian, Ubuntu, like Arch, uh, Homebrew, like uh, Nix, 
Um, we are doing all the same. Uh, we are downloading the source code, removing uh, patches which are already applied, like adding some new dependencies, like uh, we check the new problems uh, or uh, tests are working, not working. And like still, uh, all solutions are missing some packages, like every uh, repository uh, 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 is missing something. And there are breakages when you combine multiple multiple pack, multiple solutions, multiple sources, and there are inconsistencies if you combine them. Uh, some solutions are just platform or distro specific, like uh, yeah. some solutions don't allow to install multiple versions, some solutions depend on proprietary components, uh, it's not even like uh, so visible. Some of them are workarounds, like uh, we are abusing containers a lot. So. In 2006, a uh, young student, Elko Dostra, uh, young Dutch student, that's why uh, I mentioned that, he sat down and he wrote a PhD thesis uh, like, uh, about how to really uh, build and run the uh, software on a computer in a really proper way. He didn't build his design on like already known patterns which uh, don't work. He, build it on a, like a green field. So uh, Nix uh, offers, uh, first of all, there's a very big focus on reproducibility, like if I build something twice on my machine, it's always the same. If I build it on multiple machines, it's like mostly bit to bit uh, the same. If I build it in 10 years from now, it's the same. We have like full control over whole dependency stack. There's like nothing uh, inside which is like provided by somebody and we don't have a control. Uh, there are no software conflicts, no dependency conflicts. So which means that I can have like 1000 versions of GDAL and 1000 versions of Grass uh, installed uh, in my machine. There will be no uh, conflict. And, and I'm not talking about like container, uh, container isolation, I'm talking about like running the software natively. And Nix runs on Linux, Mac, Windows, uh, WSL. And there's an uh, effort to run, uh, to, to support like uh, at least somehow uh, Windows uh, builds as well. Uh, Nix can uh, provide you like per project isolated environments, again, not with containers, but like clever uh, design. Uh, your software versions are locked and you can update, up, update them when you want. There's a great customization support like the, the build process and software customization support and there's like dozens of other unique features. I can't talk about them because there are so many I discovered them just over the time. So what is Nix? Nix is package manager, it's build system, it's the language we use. There's a Nix uh, packages repository, pay attention, that's the biggest uh, packages repository in existence. We have much more packages than like Debian has, Ubuntu has, Arch has, like whoever. Uh, it's the biggest one. There's a Nix module system we use for configuration management and there's like very unique uh, operating, uh, very, very unique operating system called Nix OS, which is built on top of Nix and some concepts. And there are dozens of other community projects. So now practical stuff. So how Nix can help uh, to, like, uh, to users? Uh, I just tried to pick up some features uh, which might be useful for people. So I'm going to demonstrate that on a graph. So if, like typically on my machine or any other Nix user machine, you don't install uh, software uh, globally because like, you want different software for different projects. So if I type graph on my or Python or whatever on my machine, it will tell me there's no grass. So, but what Nix can do for you, it, can, it, uh, it allows you to run, and this is the, this command, it allows you to run the software directly from packages repository. So you can say like Nix run uh, my packages repositories on GitHub, my name, my repo name, and the name of the software, and these are the the parameters I gave to the software. So like grass will output the version. So the end of this command will be grass uh, version or grass running. Nothing else. I didn't have grass installed and I can just like run it li like that. I can even uh, specify uh, some uh, git version uh, from which I want to run a grass. Like this is a git version of my packages repository. So like now, I have a different version of graphs. I can 
yeah, without like any conflict, any issue, no, no problem with that. I can even install it if I really want uh, to be boring. Like, I have Grass installed and it's on my computer, and then I can just run Grass like without any anything uh, in front of it. Uh -huh. uh, Grass can uh, provide you uh, virtual shell environments for your uh, Grass. Uh, Nix can provide you a virtual environment for your for your for a project, something like Python virtual ends, but like for all, all software. In Next packages, we have 80,000 packages of the software, so you can uh, compose your virtual environment from all those 80,000 uh, packages. And how to do that? Like, there are many ways. Uh, all of uh, what I'm showing here is just like command line way how to get that. There are other ways uh, more practical than like sometimes more practical, sometimes this is mo uh, the best way how to do it. If I say Nix shell, GitHub, the, the path to my repository and the list of packages. Let's say I want to have a grass just like once to try something. And I have a grass here uh, and I have a QGIS. If I do, if I write exit, there's no grass or QGIS anymore. But I can have it back if I want to. Uh, so. Uh, for advanced users, there are, as I said, like uh, very strong uh, uh, capabilities to customize uh, software. So let's say like that there are multiple levels of, uh, of uh, software customization, of build process customization. This is the, the top uh, level uh, way. So I can say Nix run grass, but with these kind of changes. Uh, so this is the uh, Nix code, and what I'm doing here, um, uh, to F, I'm just grabbing my repository using some like Nix function, and to P, I'm selecting Linux packages from that repository, and I'm saying P grass override, override my build uh, dependency, I will override uh, a default GDAL version, which is used by default for grass, I will override it with uh, GDAL master version, which we have in this repository. And that's it, like, uh, uh, we, I'm not saying like Nix build and Nix install something, I'm just like saying Nix run, run grass, but with this kind of change. And in the result, what I get if I use gversion function, which is the function which prints you the, the version, of, like this is a grass function for non-grassers, um, which prints me the versions which Grass is using, and I see I have a GDAL 3.10 here. So that easy is to customize uh, your dependency of your software. Um, I can even like go a little bit deeper and use uh, a, a, another func function which is called override adders, and using this, this function, I can override anything inside of the build process of my application. So I will do the same, I will grab my repository, grab uh, Linux packages, and then I say override adders, and in configure flex, I will use uh, like original configure flex, plus I will add without X. So I, will, I want uh, to have a grass compiled without X because I'm like total nerd, I, I, hate, I hate Windows, <laughs> like not operating system. Yeah. So, and at the end, what's going to happen, Nix will run uh, Grass without X. Uh, and for example, another, another example, like that easy, I can say that like to the list of pages, uh, I want to have this, uh, this uh, extra page, which can be like some commit from some pull request, somebody fixed the bug, somebody added some useful improvement, or I did my own improvement. So I will say grass override address and add this page, and I have a working grass with this page. Uh, yeah, Nix can do other things, uh, for example, like uh, build uh, container images, and actually it can do it uh, much better than like Docker can do. So I'll use the same pattern, I grab my repository packages and so on, and use uh, Docker tools build image function. And uh, what's really needed to, uh, uh, to use in this function is the name of the image called grass and the command which I want to run. 
when, uh, when the container is starting, so it's grass version. So, and, and the result of this command will be uh, container image uh, archive, which I can directly load to Docker, and if I run it, I have a grass. So it's that easy uh, to, to have a container image, like not, no opt, get, install, blah, 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 I don't know what. So for developers, what it can bring, and, and, and uh, here I'm very happy and I appreciate uh, brave people from, from Grass. Uh, so they asked me to add these three uh, magic files to Grass uh, source code. So, uh, uh, and if you add them to your, yeah, if you add them to your uh, repository, what you can get is that if you, if you go to the source code of the, your project and uh, do nix write a run command nix develop, you are welcomed by nice message saying like uh, 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 what are the instructions, how to start building grass, and you have like all your dependencies available which you need, which you need to, to build uh, the package. So like very, very fast way how to start hacking, hacking on a, any, any project. Just hop into the source code, run Nix develop, you have all dependencies, you have uh, instructions how to build it, how to test it. It's like actually for grass, there's more instructions about like I made it uh, short. And very important stuff, pay attention if you haven't, at least uh, for this moment, if somebody is not paying, uh, uh, you can use like with having those three files in your repository, what you can do is you can run your program uh, directly from Git. So now I can do nix run GitHub OS Geo grass grass, and I'm running grass directly from the source code. I can even specify like Git revision or or, or branch. So grass. Uh, Grass users now can totally bypass like all repositories, all package, manage, uh, package managers. Like Grass users can just run Grass uh, from from Git, from pull request. Um, it's that easy. You tag the new version, and immediately people can use it, or can they can use development version. And if you want to have uh, Grass installed permanently, you just change uh, command to Nix profile install and you can do the same, like latest version, Git revision, uh, PR branch. So uh, if you are interested, uh, there's a metric channel, and I'm uh, providing like free uh, like video call sessions for people who are interested in Nix. I'm answering the questions and like uh, help, trying to help them to understand what's, uh, ah, who wants to make a picture. Uh, yeah, ah, that's, uh, wow, what, what did that, yeah. So that was it, um, yeah. Um, and there's a cherry on top of it. There's a very nice uh, uh, web uh, UI which allows you to build uh, your isolated uh, projects for your, for example, data science applications or, or uh, your like uh, GIS, uh, any kind of GIS projects where you can, whoops. You can select uh, packages from 80,000, a collection of 80,000 uh, packages for your project. Uh, you can even like configure them. If I click here on the QGIS, it would allow me to pick up the version, uh, select the plugins which I want, or like some extra Python packages. I can configure my languages like uh, Python with XYZ uh, modules. I can run like PostgreSQL database or Jupyter Notebook. I can I can add even like a data in reproducible way, so it's guaranteed by some kind of hash, and I can do a little bit more. And like if you click on create, then it will uh, provide you with like very clear short instructions how you can run this project using Nix on your any on any Linux laptop. So anything, everything you need is Linux laptop. Click click on create, and it will provide you through the steps. Uh, uh, through the all steps, and at the end you will have like this kind of environment, which will allow you to run uh, your programs, run services, uh, build the containers, and like in the future there will be even more. So this is the URL of that uh, web application, Geospatial uh, Nix uh, today, and this is the uh, Nix uh, documentation. If you are interested, please go to this URL, not to another one, any because there are like 
a lot of tutorials, wikis, whatever on the internet. This one is the best uh, to start. So thank you very much, and uh, I'm waiting for the questions. Yeah, now you can ask what's the difference between uh, Conda and Nix. Yeah. <laughs> Right, and thank you, Ivan, for compressing so much stuff in 20 minutes. So raise your hands. I see. Yeah. Yeah, I have a question. You mentioned that uh, you have a repo that's bigger than uh, on Debian. How it's possible? Yeah, because we have uh, there's a lot of uh, contributors and like people, and there's like a lot of uh, automation. So, for example, if we write a package recipe, we have like uh, bots which are checking for the new versions, and they will update it, and they will just like uh, create the PR, and as a package maintainer, you just like uh, approve, uh, review it, and up, uh, approve it. And Nix has started like a few years ago, so like we collected all that uh, all that uh, software. We are actually uh, top 10 uh, largest uh, and most more most active repository on uh, GitHub. There's like private talks uh, to GitHub engineers uh, because yeah, we are so big uh, as a Nix packages repository. No, no. Can you can you repeat the question? Yeah, if it's some kind of repacking of something, no, like it's it's, it's proper packaging. Thanks for your talk, uh, Ivan. Uh, I use it in Linux, and I'm very, very happy because everything works. I also use it in Mac, and I am reasonably happy because apart from some issues with Fortran compilers and some oddities, almost everything works. I have never used it in Windows. How is the support of the packages, of the builds, when you try to run them under Windows? Yeah, as I said, uh, Nix doesn't run currently on Windows. You can use it under WSL2. Uh, there's an uh, effort to uh, add uh, Windows support, but like uh, it's, we are not uh, there yet. Uh, if people are interested, then maybe like some kind of support will be useful. Hi, thank you for your talk. I, I don't really have a question, just a, a correction. So you said it was 80 thousand packages, but it's actually uh, 96,000 right now. Um, and Debian, yeah. Debian is at uh, 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 35,000. So that's, yeah. Yeah. So. Thanks uh, for comment from proud Dutch. <laughs> yeah, that Dutch people uh, should be really uh, proud um, of that. Like um, the, it's very hard to say what's package and what's not. Like if you have like a Python package uh, built for for different versions of uh, Python, is it like diff multiple packages or one package? Like um, th there might be like different built uh, uh, variants of the same software. But like still, like even if you would have like fifty thousand, it's like huge. Um, thanks. I have two questions. One is just a uh, question for clarification that when you um, ask to build something from a repository, so everything is then built really on your local machine by extracting all the, the source code from the, from the Git, that's, that's the first uh, question. And the second is, how is the support uh, on, on cluster environments? like? When we do uh, some processing on the cluster, we uh, it's it's Docker based for the moment. Uh, how is it um, with, with Nix? Can is it also used in uh, in HTC or HPC environment? And and how is it done? Yeah, like uh, Nix. Like I'll start with the second question. Like uh, Nix is used in uh, some HPC environments, and there's a uh, there's a reimplementation of Nix called Geeks by French people, and they are actually really focusing on HPC and uh, research and uh, science, and they run a lot of HPC. Uh, I've been to their conference. Um, they are really nice uh, guys. And the first question, uh, like, uh, because Nix builds reproducible software, each build needs to be uh, executed only once. So we have a concept of uh, binary caches, so like whenever uh, something is built, you can upload it to binary cache, and if you have those binary caches 
add it to your system and like I ask uh, Nix to run something and it was already built, it will just download it from a binary cache if I trust that binary cache. If it's not, then I'll just, it will be built on my uh, machine. So like all official, uh, all official packages coming from Nix packages repository, they are built in uh, like official cache, which is gig gigantic and we are paying like huge amount of money for that. Uh, but like you can, like it's very easy to create your own uh, caches and like for your own like uh, group and, and like for example uh, run builds in CI and automatically upload them or you just like wait a little bit and after that uh, it will be on your computer. And there's a concept of garbage collector which is watching for, for like build artifacts which are not needed by anything on your computer and it can regularly like uh, delete them uh, to like uh, server space. Okay, we have to leave it there. Anyway, after, there is no, no talk after this session, so you have a, a space of half an hour if you really want to more, know more about Nix, you just come here to Ivan. But we have to break, so folks that wish to go to other sessions, it's the time. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs>